Tankensteins, odd combinations of hulls and turrets born in weird circumstances, are often a popular topic. They have a distinct novelty and often combine components that would have hardly been imagined together. An example of such conversion, which has gained some notoriety, is the Taiwanese Wan Chung Tu, combining a modified M113A1 hull and M24 Chaffee turret. This vehicle was actually created from a rather complex program that attempted to kickstart production of armored fighting vehicles in Taiwan. The Republic of China, controlled by the Nationalist Party, became an ally of the United States following Japan's attack on America, and from 1943 onward received large amounts of American tanks as aid. As the war ended, the Chinese Civil War resumed. In 1949, the Communists managed to kick out the Republic of China and Nationalist Party from the mainland. However, they were not able to take the island of Formosa, where the regime and party continued their existence and alliance with America. In the subsequent years, the country began to sometimes be labeled as just Taiwan, though it maintains it is the Republic of China to this day. In the following years, the Republic of China would continue to receive U.S. armor. This includes large amounts of M24 Chaffee and M18 Hellcats, large amounts of M41 Walker Bulldogs followed in the mid to late 50s, and in the late 60s, Taiwan would receive the first modern U.S. armored personnel carriers with 146 M113A1s. Despite these large imports of U.S. armored vehicles, the desire for indigenous production soon arose in the country. There are always advantages to making one's own armored vehicles. More importantly in this case, the breakdown of relations between Communist China and the Soviet Union caused the United States to begin warming up its relations with the Chinese Communist Party, a massive threat to Taiwan. Many within the Republic of China army and government feared that this could threaten U.S. military deliveries. This became especially apparent in the early 1970s with the People's Republic of China taking a permanent Chinese seat at the United Nations from Taiwan, while military deals between the PRC and Western countries began to take place. There was significant shuffling of military engineering departments within the Republic of China Army in the 1960s, eventually leading to one organization, the Armored Vehicles Development Center, being tasked with the design of new or modified armored vehicles for the Taiwan Army. Several programs would begin in the 1970s. One, the Type 64, would reach production, being the combination of M18 Hellcat turrets and M42 Duster hulls. Another, the Type 65, reached the prototype stage and was an attempt at copying the M41 Walker Bulldog locally. A third program was called the Wang Chung and appears to have started in or around 1975. This was an ambitious program aimed at modifying a number of US vehicles to better fulfill Taiwan's needs or improve their capabilities. Wang Chung is an old Chinese literary term that translates to Army of 10,000 Chariots. This was an old literary way to qualify the army of the Chinese emperor, in comparison to neighboring lords, kings, and other rulers, who were said to have armies of only a thousand. Four Wang Chung vehicles are known. The first, Wang Chung 1, was a self-propelled 120mm mortar on an M113 hull. We will go into more depth on the Wang Chung 2 in an instant. Wang Chung 3 was an M113 fitted with locally produced 126mm Gong Feng 4 rockets and may have actually seen a small production run. Wan Chung 4 was an attempt to rearm M48A1 patents, received relatively recently in 1973, with a 105mm M68 gun, as on the M48A5s. Wan Chung 2 was perhaps the most original of the set. It can be described as a modified M113A1 hull, which was given a turret of an M24 light tank. The combination may seem unusual, but there could have been a decent reasoning behind it. The M24 Chaffee was, by this point, an aging tank, and the hulls and service were likely increasingly worn out and thus harder to maintain. But the turrets may still have been fully functional, and their armament could still provide useful fire support. Combining them with the widely used M113 hulls could make them a useful tool to augment M113-based mechanized units. Comparable conversions existed in other nations. During the Algerian War, France did fit turrets of mechanically worn out M24s to new AMX-13 hulls to retain their fire support utility, creating the AMX US light tank. Meanwhile, Australia would create the M113 fire support vehicle by combining the 76mm armed turret of the Saladin armored car to the M113A1 hull in the mid-60s, with the vehicle being used in Vietnam. In the 1970s, at the same time as Taiwan was studying the Wan Chung vehicles, Australia would double down with the M113A1 medium reconnaissance vehicle, which used the more modern turret of the Scorpion light tank. The base M113A1 is an American armored personnel carrier which is best described as a welded aluminum box. 
It is shaped for buoyancy and is amphibious, being propelled through the water by the movement of the tracks. The engine is installed on the front right. The original M113 had a gasoline engine, but this has been supplanted by a diesel on the M113A1. This was the Detroit Diesel 6V53, producing 215 horsepower. The vehicle had a crew of two and was fitted for 11 dismounts in the rear. The engineers working on Wang Chung 2 took this base hull and modified it significantly to best accommodate an M24 turret. The turret was to be mounted centrally on the vehicle. The engine could not remain at the front without interfering with this. It was therefore moved to the rear of the hull. The center and front of the hull were lowered, with only the rear of the Wang Chung 2 hull, around where the engine was located, retaining the original height. There does not appear to have been any modifications to the vehicle's width or length. This lowering, as well as the removal of the elements from the dismount compartment, likely led to the Wang Chung 2 hull being lightened in a fair amount in comparison to a base M113A1. This would obviously be compensated for once the turret was fitted. The armor layout in all likelihood remained identical, constructed of a rolled aluminum. The hull was 38 millimeters thick at the front, rear, and roof, with the upper front plate being sloped at 45 degrees. The sides were 44.5 millimeters thick on the upper and 31.8 on the lower sections, while the floor was 28.6. However, it must be noted that aluminum armor, while lighter, is also less effective than steel, with an effective thickness ratio of about 2 to 1. With the engine being placed to the rear, the rear ramp was obviously no longer usable to exit or enter, and the Wang Chung 2 would have to be exited through different means. The driver's hatch was maintained while the turret crew would likely enter and exit through the turret hatches already present on the M24 turret. The front removable cover for access to the engine was still present on the Wang Chung 2, being pretty much a structural element of the M113A1's hull construction, but it is unlikely that it would ever be used in anything but maintenance. On this cover, a rectangular sign was placed with characters describing an experimental, test, or prototype vehicle. On this modified M113A1 hull, the Wang Chung 2 vehicle mounted a turret taken straight from an M24 light tank. This turret used a 1.5 meter turret ring, which fit handily on the M113. The turret was mounted centrally and sat in front of the higher rear part of the hull. The turret and its gun appear to have been high enough that the turret could still be rotated at 360 degrees, though there would be little to no gun depression over the rear arc. The M24 Chaffee turret featured a three-man crew with the gunner sitting on the left front, the commander behind him, and the loader to the right. The turret featured a large cupola for the commander to the left, and just to its right, a fairly large turret door or hatch. The gunner had no dedicated hatch to exit the turret. Protection was 38mm on the front, with a similarly thick 25mm on the sides and rear, and 13 on the roof. This was homogeneous steel, and so it would be more protective than the aluminum hull. The main armament of this turret was the 75mm M6, which fired the same ammunition as the M4 Sherman's M3. This gun could fire the M48 high explosive round containing an explosive charge of 680 grams of TNT. This was still a quite capable weapon in the fire support role, having deadly potential against recently landed troops which had not yet had the time to dig in. Against armored targets, the gun could fire the M61 and M72 armor piercing rounds. Both were fired at 618 meters per second. Overall, the gun can penetrate more than 100 millimeters of armor at point-blank range, and still about 75 at a kilometer, or even about 60 at two. These values may seem very low for the 1970s, and were indeed much poorer than a larger, more modern tank gun. That said, in case of a communist landing against Taiwan around the time, the first wave's armored vehicle fleets would have consisted of lightly armored, amphibious vehicles like the Type 63 light tank and 63A armored personnel carrier. These were essentially only armored against rifle caliber ammunition, and the 75mm M6's projectiles could penetrate them at any combat range. The machine gun configuration of the turret was also shuffled around. Originally, the M250 cal was mounted at the rear of the turret to be fired from the engine deck. It was moved to the commander's cupola so it could be operated without a crew member having to leave their post. The rear mount was not abandoned, and instead fitted with a 30 odd 6 M1919A4 machine gun. Though many points can be guessed by the features of the M113A1 and M24, the exact specs of the Wang Chung 2 are not known. For example, the weight or maximum speed of the vehicle are anyone's guess. The vehicle very likely had a crew of four, with a driver in the hull, and a commander, and a gunner, and a loader. There would still be a lot of space left over inside the hall, so it could have stowed a lot of ammunition if desired. When it underwent some mobility and firing trials, it was found it wasn't really amphibious anymore. 
This was likely a consequence of the vehicle being made heavier by the turret. Guessing the exact weight of the Wang Chung 2 is not possible due to the changes that were made to the hull, as well as the addition of the turret. But a weight of around 14 to 15 tons should likely be expected, as well as the changes in the center of buoyancy. The Wang Chung 2 was never adopted by Taiwan. A reason behind this could be that, by the 1970s, the number of M113A1s present in Taiwan was still just moderate. As such, consuming part of the fleet in such conversion, which implied some extensive transformations of the hull that in all probability could not be turned back, was viewed as an uncertain venture. This was likely supported by the idea that the combat value of such a vehicle going into the future would be increasingly uncertain. Though it was never put into service, the Wancheng 2 remains a unique and quite funny looking example of a Franken tank. There have been other odd combinations across the world and over the decades, but what are your favorites, and are there any that you'd like to see us cover? Don't hesitate to let us know. This is all for today's video, feel free to subscribe for more, and until then, keep us in your sights.